everyone. We are Group 6 of Pengajin Malaysia 3 module. I'm Maidun Halag Yomi alongside with Justin Philip, Suleiman, Calvin Lauren and Stephanie. Right now, we would like to present to you the brief summary of Kota Kinabalu. By watching this video, you should be able to understand some of the things regarding Kota Kinabalu, such as the history and formation, ethnology and flag, geography, local cuisine, local parks, and tourist attractions of Kota Kinabalu. First of all, let me introduce Kota Kinabalu to you. Kota Kinabalu, or formerly known as Jasultan, is one of the bigger cities in Malaysia with a population of over 600,000 people. Kota Kinabalu is also the capital of Sabah that tends to be visited by foreign tourists because of its unique tourist attractions. By visiting Kota Kinabalu, you should be able to get the chance to visit numerous tourist attractions and even taste the local foods there. If you are planning to visit Malaysia or Borneo, then Kota Kinabalu is one of the places that you should visit. Next, we'll dive into some of the detailed aspects of Kota Kinabalu. Hello, I am Lauren Ketingunawan and right now, we'll start on the history and formation of Kota Kinabalu. Kota Kinabalu goes a long way from the history. Despite the transfer of sovereignty from British to Japan and back to British, Kota Kinabalu has grown into one of the biggest cities in Malaysia, with many cultures and diversity revolving around the city. It started in 1521, Kota Kinabalu initially was in the hands of the Malay Bruni Sultanate Empire. Kota Kinabalu was then just a small fishing village called Api Api. It was discovered then by the British North Borneo Chartered Company when they moved their settlement after the fire caused by Matt Saleh. It later was named Jesultan after Sir Charles Jessel. Jesultan then was conquered by the Japanese on 9 January 1942 and named back to Api Api. The Australian army then launched an attack on the Japanese, which caused Api Api to encounter its worst state where only three buildings stood from all the war and bombings. After recovering from the war, Jasultan officially joined Malaysia as Sabah after negotiating. It changed its name to Kota Kinabalu and finally received its city status on 2nd February 2000. Hi everyone, I'm Sayyid Suleiman Alimir and I'll be sharing on the etymology and flag of Kota Kinabalu. First is the etymology. So, Kota Kinabalu is named after the iconic mountain Mount Kinabalu, which is near the city. If you break the name down, you get the word Kota, which is a Malay word taken from Sanskrit, which means city. Uh, then the second word is Kinabalu, which originates from Aki and Nabalu, which translated means ancestors and mountain. In the historical local language, Abdusan. Translated to English, Kota Kinabalu means city of Kinabalu. However, historically, the area has had many other names, such as Jesselton, Api Api, Desoka, and Singamata. Moving over to the flag and seal, which consists of five main colors, red, white, yellow, green, and shades of blue. The dark blue prominently depicts Mount Kinabalu, which is displayed on both the flag and seal, and this is similar to the state flag of Sabah. Hello everyone, I am Stephanie Goldwyn, and I will be sharing with you on the geography, flora, and fauna of Kota Kinabalu. Kota Kinabalu is the capital city of the Sabah state, which is located in East Malaysia, on the northwest coast of Borneo, facing the South China Sea, with part of the city being surrounded by rainforest. The city got its name in 1986 as Kota Kinabalu or Fort of Kinabalu, which refers to Mount Kinabalu, which lies to the east of the city and is the highest peak in Malaysia at 4,095 meters above sea level. Mount Kinabalu is also one of the highest mountains in Southeast Asia, Kota Kinabalu also serves as the capital of, for the state of Sabah, hence it is the entry point of all the visitors coming to this Malaysian state. The climate in Kota Kinabalu is predominantly hot with high temperatures, considerable amounts of rain and high humidity throughout the course of this year. This humid weather has resulted in Kota Kinabalu becoming a hotspot of plant biodiversity with about 5,000 to 6,000 vesicular plants in this area. These plants make up about 14% of the flora in the Malaysia platographical region or about 2.5% of the flora of the earth. 
Kotakinabalu's fauna is also a very rich collection in itself, with about 326 bird species, an estimated of over 100 mammal species, over 110 land snail species, to name a few. Wildlife ranges from mammals, birds, fishes, amphibians, reptiles, to insects and other invertebrates. Hi guys, I'm Philip. Here I want to let you know and make you craving by introducing Kota Kinabalu must try foods. Okay, so we start with appetizer first. This is Kue Jinjin. Kue Jinjin is a food that commonly found in Kota Kinabalu since it is the most favorite traditional food from there. When we break down the word, Kue is cookies and Jinjin is wing. It's named like that because the shape that have many circles in the middle of a cookie. And nowadays, they have many choices of taste yet the original one will be sweet and tasty. Next, we continue with wheat food. It come hyong crack. People often call this dish with golden fragrance. It's because the taste of the spices is very light and has a delicious aroma. The aroma comes from a mixture of curry powder, curry leaf, red seams, chilies, shallots, and garlics. Next, when you would like to go to Mount Kinabalu, look around the roadside. There is a food named Sinalo Bakas. It's the most popular non-halal food from Sabah, especially at Kota Kinabalu. The meaning of Sinalau is actually smoke and bakas is poor. It has a juicy texture and a bit spicy. After eating spicy food, it would be nice if we close the food session with something cold and sweet. One of the unique must-try desserts in Kota Kinabalu is called Core Coconut Jelly Pudding. This is basically pudding that served in the coconut shell and it has a milky, sweet, salty taste because of the coconut and pudding combination. Visiting a new place must be really, really nice and interesting. Trying out their foods, learning about their culture, but it is not enough because we have to include visiting local parks. I would like to give recommendations, but before I give my recommendations, let me introduce myself. My name is Carl Finaditya Ahmad. Bachelor of Business Students, Semester 1.5 in Taylor's University. So, the first park that I'd like to recommend to y'all is the Kota Kinabalu City Park. This is one of the most famous city park there, where because like there is a monument that pays tribute to fallen soldiers during World War One and Two. And the second park that I'd like to recommend is Tun Fuat Stephens Park. There is a like obvious fact that I'd like to state here where this park is named after Sabah's first chief minister who died in a plane crash. The park is a favorite exercise ground of locals in morning and evening. And the last park that I'd like to recommend is Tanjung Aru Perdana Park. This is one of the most special parks because this offers you the best seats in town to enjoy a spectacular sunset on a clear day. That's why, after this COVID ends, let's go to Kota Kinabalu's parks together. Hi everyone, I'm Justin Nicholas Sumner, and I will be sharing on the tourist attractions in Kota Kinabalu. So first of all, this is the picture of one of the best tourist spots in Kota Kinabalu. It is called Mount Kinabalu. Mount Kinabalu is regarded as the highest mountain in Malaysia because its summit reaches approximately 4,000 meters. In addition, Mount Kinabalu has a wide range of biodiversity in it, and it offers a beautiful view of Kota Kinabalu and whole Borneo from its peak. The second tourist attraction is the Tunku Abdul Rahman Park. Tunku Abdul Rahman Park is located in Gaya Bay near Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. This park is known for its beautiful coral and marine life. For entry fee, normally it will cost 10 ringgit for foreign adults and 15 ringgit for children. The third one is the Sabah State Museum. It is a museum that was built in 1985. The museum consists of the main building, science and education center, heritage village, Sabah Art Gallery, and the Museum of Islamic Civilization. In conclusion, Kota Kinabalu is a city that is full with diversity, reflected in its tourist attractions, history and formation, local cuisines, geography, local parks, ethnology, and flag. If you are the person that loves to enjoy green and natural environment, then Kota Kinabalu is definitely a place that you must visit, especially when you're planning to visit Malaysian Borneo. Finally, that brings us to the end of this video. We hope that you already got the clear understanding of Kota Kinabalu as a whole. Once again, thank you for your attention and have a nice day.